Hi everybody, my name is Stu Harrison. We're back with another piano review here at Miriam Pianos and we're in our Oakville showroom just outside of Toronto, Canada. And today we are looking at the Zimmerman Z185 six foot class grand piano. This is a brand new model for us. Uh, we've also just uh, done a few videos on their upright pianos. Really um, exceptional instruments for the price. And what I love about it is providing a genuine alternative to the Kawai Yamaha often binary debate that parents have when they're talking about a grand piano, say in the $20,000 range or an upright piano in the $10,000 range. Um, I think this is going to provide our customers with a phenomenal third option to consider. And what's nice is the differences between what the Zimmerman brings uh, versus say what a Kawhi brings is so clear that this is not going to be a difficult decision. It's just a really nice thing to have an alternate. Uh, and so today we're going to be giving you uh, some playing on the Z185. We're going to be talking about the action. We're going to be talking about the tone. I'll probably give you some musical impressions of mine about the instrument. Uh, and of course, discussing a little bit about how this piano comes to be and wind up perhaps one day in your home. So thank you again for joining us here. We are going to get started right away. So as soon as you start digging into Zimmerman, you're going to come across one fact uh, that I think in 2019 should actually give you more comfort than anything, which is that Hyloon is a manufacturing partner in the Zimmerman project. And the reason that I bring this up is I first played Hyloon probably back in about 2006. 2007, I had a chance to try one of their grands. And I said at this point, I remember mentioning this to Alan Miriam, who I was beside, you know, this is a great action. He'd already had a chance to play it. He agreed, and it was quite clear that they were modeling their action design off of the Renner action, which of course, so many high-end European pianos uh, still use as their primary um, action choice uh, when they build their instruments. Um, Hyloon has continued to advance as a manufacturer. The design, the quality control, everything has just moved forward in the 10 years or so since I've had a chance to try it the first time. Um, and it's quite clear uh, that when Beckstein uh, restarted their Zimmerman project uh, and chose Hyloon uh, as their manufacturing partner, uh, that the Hyloon action that was going into the Grands was obviously where Beckstein started. Uh, this feels, uh, has definitely a similar feel to what you would get out of a Hyloon. Um, there have been some slight geometric modifications made to it and of course the refining and the regulation process that the Zimmermans are going through is a little bit beyond what a high loon would go but the general character is still there. You're getting an action which feels very fluid. Uh, the repetition speed is excellent. It has that slightly shallower key action, which makes it so nice to just you know do runs, scales, anything uh, nice and fast over. Um, and right out of the box, this comes very, very well regulated. Um, the Beckstein quality management system, which is this tag that you see over on the side here, really has more to do with the action and the hammer setup than anything else in the piano. Because although Hyloon is a manufacturing partner, it is not simply just building the pianos with a Beckstein stamp on it. Like there are many examples of where you've got higher end brands who have simply contracted an Asian manufacturer to crank out the instruments. Uh, and then of course they take credit for virtually everything on the instrument. Beckstein actually has one of their engineers at the factory full time uh, on the floor 
supervising uh, the employees who uh, specifically uh, do the final assembly and regulation um, and the hanging of the hammers and the stringing of the piano uh, for the Zimmerman project. Now, this limits how many instruments they can crank out, and you'll see that the number uh, on that quality management system tag is pretty low. On this grand, it's still under the 3,000 mark, so they're not putting out very many pianos. So even though this feels a little weird to say, it's quite frankly the reality. This is a Chinese manufactured piano that is actually limited production and has a substantial amount of hand craftsmanship in it. And I would wager the combination of the Beckstein design, the Beckstein quality control system, and the fact you're starting with a high loon uh, sort of base platform makes this likely one of the top two or three Chinese uh, built pianos that you could possibly buy today anywhere in the world under any brand. So you've got an action which really feels quite satisfying. It's gonna be very reminiscent of some of the other German brands that you might be familiar with in terms of feel. Uh, this is gonna feel somewhat similar to say a Schimmel. It's gonna feel somewhat similar to a Sauter or a Seiler. Some, some of those pianos which have made use of Renner actions in the past. So. Uh, the other nice thing, as we said, we're uh, presenting this as kind of an alternative to the Kawai Yamaha uh, paradigm that so many people are used to when they're shopping for a six foot piano sort of in the 20,000 plus range, is this doesn't feel like a Kawai. It definitely feels a little bit lighter than what you would find on the six, six foot two GX3 or the five foot 11 GX2. Um, and the lightness is a little more akin to what you get on the Yamaha, say, uh, C3X. However, the tone and the response is nothing like either one of them. So you really are getting a completely new beast uh, with the Z185. Now, let's talk about tone. Unlike the uprights, the grands are actually something that we did a significant amount of voicing to out of the box. Um, you know, dealers are not always going to agree with the manufacturer's choices, and in this case, we thought that the Z185, as it was shipped, um, had a little bit too much brightness to it. Um, now, when you talk about a grand piano or an upright piano that is using a white spruce soundboard, white spruce as a character tends to be a little bit more on the brighter, clearer side to begin with. On top of the fact that they had the hammers voiced a little bit brighter, um, and the scale design tends to produce more of a mid-range clarity than this big sort of woofy bass, um, the first thing we did was we took a layer of felt off and we did some needling, uh, not right on the top of the hammer, but more around the shoulders, just to give it a bit of a cushion uh, and to start to draw out some of those mid-tones, which are absolutely clearly there. So if, you're, if you've got a dealer that has the capability to do this, um, and otherwise you really like the instrument, just have a conversation with them, see if this is something they're willing to do. Or if you've already had a chance to try Zimmerman somewhere, and your first reaction was that that was a bit too bright, well, again, have the conversation, see if they might be open to working with you on a little bit of voicing uh, to try the instrument again. Um, but as I said, we've been really, really happy with the Z185 with a bit of uh, concert level, concert type voicing that we've done uh, on the hammer. Speaking of the hammer, we've got a mahogany core. That's, again, quite unusual for the price point. And the piano is equipped with a duplex scaling, which, of course, is those extra little silver ridges on the other side of the treble bridge. It's to bring out some of those extra high-end partials, add some clarity, and also add some power. This is kind of similar to, on a pipe organ, adding like uh, mixtures on top, which are not necessarily perfectly in tune, but sort of um, interact and intersect with the other harmonics to actually create um, sort of peak waves. It's kind of like the equivalent of like a high-end rogue wave, but in the middle of the frequency. That got a little bit esoteric there. But anyway, thank you for following.
just a lovely mid-range singing sound to the piano. clear once you get down into the tenor and the bass range of the instrument. How is this going to be different than a playing experience on say a kawaii? Well, uh, like I said, the action is going to feel a little more shallow um, and I would say that it takes maybe a touch more experience as a player to have the same level of control as you can get out of the kawaii with their Millennium 3 action, which of course is, is a hard one to beat in the first place. But there is more clarity in the bottom end uh, than what I would get out of a similarly sized kawaii in my opinion. Whereas the Kauai is going to give you much uh, broader warmth um, and, and um, a much more uh, bass tone, even though uh, there's a little bit of less clarity. Uh, the Kauai treble is just different. It's a little hard to put into words. If you have the opportunity to play them side by side, you'll, you'll know what I mean. In fact, leave me a comment if it's something that you have had a chance to do. Uh, but anyway, to wrap up, we've got the Z185 Zimmerman Grand Piano designed by Beckstein, supervised fully by Beckstein, and of course partnered with manufacturer uh, High Loon. A phenomenal six foot alternative to a uh, Kawai C3X uh, or a Yamaha, or sorry, a Kawai GX3 or a Yamaha C3X um, for a little less money, but certainly still in a very, very similar uh, quality range and presenting a genuinely different musical experience for you to consider. Uh, please check the links for just the playing video uh, if you just want to hear the piano uh, and how it musically presents rather than listening to me talk about it. Uh, we'll make sure that the link is really easy to find. And once again, thank you for joining us for a piano review. Happy shopping. We hope you have enjoyed the video. Leave us any comments or suggestions for future videos. We'll see you back next time. Thanks.